In this video, we're going to practice finding limits that require some intuition to find. So in a lot of cases, there won't be much work to show, but I'm going to write my thought process down below in green. For problem number seven, there is no work to show. You should be able to just look at this and see that the limit does not exist. Here's why. As x approaches infinity, sine oscillates between negative 1 and positive 1. In other words, it just keeps going up and down and up and down between negative 1 and positive 1 forever. Because it never levels off at a particular value, the limit does not exist. There's no work to show for number 8 either. You should be able to look at this and realize that the limit is 0. Now, let me try to convince you of that down below. So as x approaches infinity, sine x stays between negative 1 and positive 1, like I showed you on the previous problem. But meanwhile, the denominator x just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Because the numerator stays small, as the denominator gets bigger and bigger, the overall value of the fraction is approaching zero. So that's why the limit is zero. So there are only two steps to show for problem number nine. You should be able to look at this and immediately know that the limit is equal to the sine of zero. The reason why is because as x approaches infinity, uh, the one over x inside approaches zero. Obviously because uh, the denominator is getting bigger and bigger, the value of the fraction is getting smaller and smaller. So that's where the zero is coming from. Then we just have to evaluate the sine of zero, which is zero. And we know that because zero is right here on the unit circle, sine is the y value, the y value is zero. So our limit is zero. For number 10, we are going to use the acronym FEPL to help us remember that as x approaches infinity, uh, factorials grow faster than exponents, exponents grow faster than polynomials, and polynomials grow faster than logarithms. So right now we're in a race between exponential terms and logarithmic terms. And we see that um, exponent terms grow faster than logarithmic terms. So because these are the terms that matter most, then this limit will equal the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x power over e to the x power. So obviously this expression is just one. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity of one, and that is simply one. On number 11, notice that x is approaching zero from the right, not infinity. So we cannot use FEPL and we cannot talk about what matters most, like we did on the previous problem. We will just have to use some serious intuition. Well, um, as x approaches 0 from the right, of course, um, e to the x power is going to approach e to the 0 power, since x is approaching 0. So the original limit will equal the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of e to the 0 power plus, and I'm just going to leave this as the natural log of x, over e to the, whoops, e to the 0 power. Of course, as we get closer and closer to e to the 0 power, that really has a value of 1. So um, this limit will equal the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 plus natural log x over 
1. Well, this 1 in the denominator is no longer necessary, so this will equal the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 plus natural log x. So at this point, we should definitely be able to look at this and say um, this limit will not exist. But I'm going to try to convince you of this down below. As x approaches 0 from the right, what's happening to the natural log of x? Well, the natural log of x is approaching negative infinity. The reason why is because we have memorized what the parent function natural log of x looks like, and it looks like this. So as x approaches 0 from the right, that means we are coming in like this. And notice that the value of the function is falling, 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 falling. It is approaching negative infinity. So that means that uh, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 plus natural log x is approaching 1 plus negative infinity. And negative infinity is not a number. This is just a concept. That's why I'm sort of writing this in green. This is not official an official equation. Um, but we can see that 1 plus negative infinity is going to still be negative infinity. And uh, when the limit is negative infinity, we say the limit does not exist. In problem number 12, we see that x is approaching infinity. So we can use FEPL and what matters most. So looking at the numerator, we see an exponential term and a logarithmic term. According to our FEPL acronym, exponential terms will grow faster than logarithmic terms. So that means in terms of what matters most, it will be the exponential term. In the denominator, we only have the logarithmic term. So these are the two terms that will matter as x approaches infinity. So this limit will equal the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x over natural log x. From here, we should be able to see that the limit simply does not exist. But of course, I am going to try to convince you of that down here. So as x approaches infinity, e to the x over natural log x. Um, what's happening to these? Well, e to the x power is approaching infinity because x is just getting bigger and bigger. Uh, but what about natural log x? Well, that's also approaching infinity. So we just have this uh, infinity over infinity, which uh, seems indeterminate. But don't forget about FEPL. These uh, terms are not growing at the same rate. These infinities are not the same. The exponential term is growing faster than the logarithmic term. So uh, even though we have infinity over infinity, the infinity in the numerator is a faster growing infinity. And the infinity in the denominator is a slower growing infinity. So because we have a faster infinity in the numerator and a slower infinity in the denominator, um, this is going to be approaching infinity. For comparison, let's do a quick hypothetical example. Imagine that this was upside down and we had uh, the natural log of x over e to the x. In that case, um, we'd have our infinity over infinity again. But the natural log x is a slower infinity. 
and the e to the x is the faster growing infinity. So because the faster growing infinity is in the denominator, um, the value of the fraction is going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller as the denominator outgrows the numerator. So this expression would actually be approaching zero. So we can have infinity over infinity, and it will approach infinity if the faster infinity is in the numerator. But if we have infinity over infinity, and the faster infinity is in the denominator, we're going to be approaching zero. Anyway, in this case, the expression is approaching infinity, which means that the limit does not exist. And number 13, notice that x is approaching zero from the right. Because it is not approaching infinity, we cannot directly use uh, FEPL and what matters most. Instead, I think the clearest strategy will be to uh, do an algebraic step here, and let's use the property where uh, if we have a plus b over c, that is the same as a over c plus b over c. So let's split this up into two separate fractions. So we have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of e to the x power over natural log x plus natural log x over natural log x. Natural log x divided by natural log x is just 1. So now we have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of e to the x over natural log x plus 1. Now, as x approaches 0 from the right, this expression is going to approach 0 plus 1. Uh, which of course will simply equal 1. So that's going to be the limit. But let me drop down below and try to convince you of why um, e to the x power over natural log x is going to be approaching 0. So as x approaches 0 from the right, let's think about what happens to e to the x power and what happens to the natural log of x. Well, um, e to the x power is going to be approaching e to the 0 power, because x is approaching 0, and that is going to be uh, equal to 1. So e to the x power is approaching 1. What about natural log of x? As x approaches 0 from the right, natural log x is approaching negative infinity. All right, we've talked about this before. Um, I'm gonna, I'll show you the graph one more time. So uh, we have memorized that the graph of natural log x looks like this. So as x approaches 0 from the right, what's happening is the function is falling and falling and falling and therefore approaching negative infinity. So we end up with this uh, idea of 1 over negative infinity. If you're dividing 1 by a number that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, the overall value is approaching 0. So that's where this 0 is coming from. And of course, 0 plus 1 is 1. So that's your limit.